Hello, my friends. In high school, I hated math. I never had a teacher that showed me that math could be fun. Since then, I've come to see that math is a language, and though I still am not very good at it, I enjoy sometimes looking at some numbers and seeing how much they accord with my perceived reality. Today, I did a little bit of math. I was thinking about the coronavirus. I was thinking about salaries of people, and I was thinking about reality in a mystical way. But here's the thing, often we don't really understand numbers because when we get to a certain bigness of number, it no longer makes sense to us. And we hear that the US is so many billion or whatever in debt, and it's just a number, it doesn't seem to register. A billion is a big number. Most of us have no conception of it, and today I would like to share some conception of it. The coronavirus part came because my father was telling me about a news program he had seen. And a, a doctor of unknown type had been on the program as an expert and had said that he felt that the coronavirus could wipe out 30% of the population of the earth. I started to think about that a little bit. And most of you have heard the numbers. I think we're up to 100,000 cases and between three and 4,000 deaths from coronavirus right now. Those are the numbers the media is putting out. Could be a lot more than that, could be less than that. But when we look at the numbers here for what it would take to wipe out 30% of the human population, well, it might be eye-opening. Let's start with the human population. We've got 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet right now. And let's imagine we want a disease that is going to wipe out 30% of that population in a year's time. What is your guess, before we move forward, to how many people that is per day? 30% of 7.7 .7 billion. How many people would have to be wiped out per day to destroy 30% of the human population? Okay, let's break it down. 30% is 2,310,000,000 people. Easier to grasp? Not really. We don't really have an understanding of what that is. So, how many people per day is that? There's your guess. Remember what you guessed. The answer is that we would have to have a virus, a pandemic, that was killing 6,328,767 people per day. Now, that is a little bit easier of a number to grasp, but it's still, for most of us, too big. So what's your guess? How many is that per hour? How many people would have to die per hour? have a pandemic that was going to wipe out 30% of the human population in a year's time. 263,698 people per hour. To get it even smaller down, we'd need to be losing 73 people per second in order to get us to that level of a pandemic. As you can see, even in the wildest projections of how many people coronavirus is taking down, we are nowhere in any conceptual league of being close enough to a virus that would wipe out 30% of the world's population. Now maybe over time we can extend that to, to two years or three years, but we still need something, three years, that's going to be almost 100,000 people per hour. There you go. There's some numbers on pandemics, 30% of the world's population, what it would take. How about salaries? Someone was saying to me a while ago that, yeah, there's some really high salaries for CEOs of top companies, but they're contributing so much to society that they deserve that. And I thought, well, it'd be interesting to take uh, one CEO. Let's, so let's pull out this, I'm going to mispronounce his last name, which is Greek. I'm so sorry to my Greek friends out there. Andre Kalatsopoulos. 
He is of uh, Philip Morris, which is a cigarette company. And he's making them a modest amount compared to some other CEOs out there. So definitely not anywhere near the top, but it comes out to about 16 million per year. Again, that same problem, 16 million. It's just, oh, where we've heard these big numbers so many times, it doesn't make any impact on us. Let's break that down a little bit. How much do you think he makes per day? He makes $43,835 per day. Let's assume he works a nine hour day. What do you think he makes per hour? Well, $4,870 per hour. It's not too bad. Remember, this guy is on the medium to low end of the big CEOs. And that comes out to $81 a minute. Interesting. So 81 a minute. Boy, I think most of us, if we're making 81 an hour, we feel pretty good. So the question is, is Andre contributing that much more through his cigarette company, that much more goodness to the world than you are, say, in your job, where I'm guessing you probably make something slightly less than $4,870 per hour. The last one, is getting a little mystical because when we talk about these things sometimes we can find ourselves getting upset and it helps to remember that we humans we don't see the whole picture and this one i figured out a long time ago and i actually don't have the numbers i hope you're not too disappointed in my head but but i can still share the gist of it with you so there is something called the electromagnetic spectrum and that's made of waves they all travel the speed of light. So essentially they are different types of light. And this electromagnetic energy, which is probably a better way to say it than light, because light, we usually mean the uh, wavelengths that we can see. This electromagnetic energy is all stuff that has to do with making up reality. Uh, just on the edge of our visual spectrum are different colors that we never can see or conceive of. When scientists are looking out at oh, other stars or planets, they can, by using instruments that can pick up other white wavelengths, they can tell the chemical constituents of, say, a star. And sometimes we'll see in astronomy magazines these really cool colored photos of the UV picture of, let's say, a galaxy. Of course, we can only see the colors we can see. So those UV, that UV light is translated into our visible spectrum of light. And we're not really seeing the UV, but it does tell us that there are other colors out there and there are wavelengths that, like x-rays, that see right through much of our body but are only stopped by bones. There's other ways that we actually can sense some of these, these electromagnetic waves. So for instance, UV radiation, you cannot see it from the sun, but your skin will sense it by becoming burned. Now here's the amazing thing. These electromagnetic waves, they range from smaller than an atom. An atom so small nobody's ever really seen it. <laughs> smaller than an atom to over, we have elf waves we know about, which are over 100,000 miles long. That's a pretty big range. You can think of that as the amount of reality out there from smaller than an atom to larger than, well, multiple times around the Earth. I think the Earth is 24,000 miles, a little bit over that around. Knowing that we have this aspect of reality that ranges from smaller than an atom to say 100,000 miles, and I believe there's actually larger waves, but we'll just use that. How much of that do you think we can see? Well, the numbers are that we can see a range from 380 nanometers to 740 nanometers. Now, if I had a hair and the width, not the length, the width of that hair would be immensely larger than that amount of wavelength that we can see. So out of that giant stretch, that's how much of reality we can see with our eyes. 
put this into perspective. If reality consisted of you starting right now and walking around the entire earth and all the experiences and things that you would have during that walk around the earth, that was all of reality, and you laid a hair down on the ground and you got down and you looked at it, the width of that hair, that is a, <laughs> an over approximation of how much of reality we see with our eyes. This is why math is fun to me. It can expand our mind a little bit. It can make us think a little bit more. We've gone from a very easy to accept statistic, a doctor coming and saying this could wipe out 30% of the human population, to looking at how the virus has played out so far and saying, boy, if it's gonna get to that range, it has a long, long way to go. It's gonna have to get a lot more virulent and be a lot more deadly in order to ever kill off, what was it? Oh yeah, 6,328,000 plus people per day. So far, we don't have anything of that nature. And that tells us a little bit about the human population, how many people there are out there. Wow. It's kind of mind-blowing, all this stuff. If you like math, do some math of your own. And down in the comments, share something that will be shocking or paradigm shifting for us. Take something that we think we know about and break it down, do some math, and show us how much of our body's DNA is actually our own or how much food gets thrown away in the United States, let's say, every year. Choose something, do some math, and show us down below. If you're not into math, just share your thoughts about this video down in the comments. All right, my friends, love to you all. Thanks for being part of our adventures, and we'll talk with you in the comments.